really excited to find ways to help our store associates stay strong and stay healthy. So we built an exosuit with Virginia Tech to give our store associates superpowers. When they go to lift those things over and over again, it just creates strain on their bodies. It makes them tired. The suit's gonna make them get through their day in an easier manner. One of our major goals for this was to make it easier to lift heavy objects. We want to avoid injuries and give people more energy while lifting. The exosuit is the end result or manifestation of a very long and rigorous research project to really make sure that this was going to be the thing that would work. We've made it as simple as possible. We use textiles as a human interface to make the suit comfortable and conformable, as well as being flexible. We use carbon fiber in the back and the legs so that it can twist and bend with the person. As the person bends, the carbon fiber will store energy, sort of like a bow and arrow, and then when the person stands back up, it returns the energy to them, just like releasing the arrow. The team includes four undergraduates and four graduate students. They've really taken care of calculations, need finding, prototyping, to making a refined design which we can put in the store. Our associates are excited about seeing something different. Their reaction is, wow, it's really nice to see the company doing something to help us in a radically different way. And just how cool is that? It's been wonderful working with Lowe's Innovation Labs because they're trying to dream of what the future could hold. And at Virginia Tech, we're trying to invent the future. This exosuit is literally the first step. Exosuits of the future will have better form factors, more amazing powers to make this superpower even better. We're working on an origami-based, deployable ballistic barrier that will keep emergency personnel safe during a hostile situation. We met with federal agents that often use current shields and asked what could help them to better do their job. Current products out there are about 90 pounds, so that's pretty heavy for one person to carry, and it only protects one person. Our goal was to go for 50 pounds and protect two to three people. This pattern is a Yoshimura crease pattern. And when it deploys, it provides these nice angles, which we hope will be even more effective shape for a barrier. So going from paper to other materials can be really challenging. It has 12 layers of Kevlar with an aluminum core in the middle. The students did a lot of calculations, and 12 layers is really what you need to be able to withstand a bullet from a handgun. One of the great things about this particular fold pattern is that it opens and closes really easily. In an emergency situation, you've got to be able to just get that thing open and get it in the way. Today's objective was to see if it worked, if it actually stops bullets. My first thought was, did he miss? <laughs> so I went back to the high-speed camera that had been filming and the bullet sunk right in. Range is hot. It was exciting to see that it did stop the bullets, and we were able to successfully demonstrate it with 9mm, 357 Magnum, and 44 Magnum pistols. The federal agents that saw our initial prototype were really excited about it. Their response was that this is a revolutionary product. My dad is actually a police officer himself. This could be something that could be used by him or other officers that could prevent injury or even save their lives. In a short way, uh, we wanted to sit everywhere and, and anywhere. Um, this was because we had been at an apparel and we realized people were standing. And uh, from that idea, we thought, hmm, why don't we make a simple exoskeleton that just solves one problem? Sitting. And that's how the idea sort of shot off. The chairless chair is a sitting support for industry workers who have to work standing. It allows them to sit uh, wherever they are working. Uh, when I say wherever they are working, it's because you wear it around your legs and you can walk around with it. And then you can just lock the knee and sit. We had 
the, the, the Zulke guys as part of the Nuni, Nuni team and we could say those were like our extended engineering team. Zulke is, was more, I'd say, accommodating to startups, um, more friendly. And uh, what we liked about it was that their relationship with, with us was as an, ex as an extension to Nuni rather than having this uh, barrier where this is a service provider and we're the client. The first company to actually show large interest was Audi and BMW. These were the two big car manufacturers and those were the places where we tested. We've also further then tested with, uh, with Daimler and uh, Renault uh, and also Airbus. My name is Gavin Barnes. I'm the lead engineer for Lockheed Martin Exoskeleton Technologies. This is Tony, my assistant. And this is the Fortis Exoskeleton. Fortis is an unpowered exoskeleton designed to improve the quality of life for industrial workers. It does that through two techniques. The first it takes the weight of this tool, transfers it through the arm, to the hip joint, down to the ground around me. This takes the load off of me, and so it feels like if I were to carry something heavy with a friend of mine, box would feel lighter because my friend is taking part of that weight. And then in that same sense, the Fortis is holding onto the tool right here and taking a significant portion of that tool's weight down to the ground. So when I come along and hold the other end, I don't longer need to worry about holding the tool up and using it. I can instead just focus on the craftsmanship of the job at hand. This takes a lot of strain off my arms and my shoulders. Part two is this guy. I've been holding this tool for this 16 pound tool for about 24 hours. That would be a significant burden on my back if I were to do that unassisted. The Fortis has a counterbalance assembly here, which imposes the weight of the tool up front about my hip joint, which is the fulcrum. These two loads bounce each other out as if I'm on a small seesaw, reducing the strain in my lower back. As a result, I'm able to keep an upright, proper working posture for much longer periods of time. So, when you combine the load reduction in my back, my arms, and my shoulders, we are able to improve the strength, endurance, and productivity of our users. And not only that, and really what's most important here for them, is that this improves their quality of life. Now, at the end of the day, instead of becoming home exhausted and burned out, they have the energy to go and enjoy their lives. And that's how we go from the science fiction of exoskeletons to the scientific breakthroughs of the Fortis. Thank you. Great. Hi, I'm Rory Kennard and I'm CEO of Mackinex. The powered hand truck is an award-winning lift and load solution allowing one person to lift up to 140 kilograms or 308 pounds. Your safety is paramount to us at Mackinex and this video contains some clear and simple guidelines on how to use the powered hand truck safely, responsibly and effectively. Before you start, please ensure that there are no obstacles in the way. You can only use the powered hand truck on a hard flat surface as it has been rated for use on slopes no greater than three degrees. The powered hand truck allows just one person to pick up to 140 kilograms or 308 pounds. Ensure you never try to pick up more than 140 kilograms or 308 pounds with the hook attachment and 120 kilograms or 265 pounds with the forklift attachment. Always plan your pickup to ensure you're going to be safe. Key safety items to remember. Please make sure you keep your hands on the handles when carrying any load. At all times, follow the correct hand position guidelines. Whilst a load is attached, ensure your hands are below chest level. A good way to check this is to have your wrist to elbow at 90 degrees. Whilst the powered hand truck is under load, do not push on the back wheels. These are not load-bearing and are for storage use only. Always keep your load at a low height when traversing across the ground. After taking the product carefully out of the box and checking all components are in place, you are ready to lift easily and safely. Lift your hands so that the machine is resting on the front wheel. You can then easily push the powered hand truck forwards. Remember, do not push the powered hand truck using the small back wheels at any time. Remember, don't have your hands up too high. Always keep them lower than your chest. Place the hook through the lift eye. Apply the brake as necessary and find the balance point giving you control. 
you can now take the weight of the load and release the brake. Whilst moving towards your dropping off point, always make sure you keep the load close to the ground. Remember, don't use the powered hand truck as a trolley by pushing the machine with the back wheels. This can result in serious damage. Once you're at the drop off point, raise the jib to the required height using the switch on the right hand side. The jib height is limited to a maximum of 1.9 metres, or 6 feet. The powered hand truck can easily pick up items and load onto various vehicles for simple transportation of heavy goods.